I'm going to take you on a little guided tour today of some of the uh, Yorkshire Wolds villages, villages in my sort of neck of the woods. A bit further west from where I am, but this is uh, Ellerton, Ellerton Dale. It used to be very hairy down here in the winter, uh, quite a steep hill. There's also lots of wildlife, and they've divided the road now, so I assume it's to make it safer for cyclists, but there really isn't room for a cycle to be inside that dashed section. You have to exercise caution up here, because unfortunately people do come down a fair rate of knots in cars. The road isn't wide enough for two. And uh, for some reason they just don't seem to expect anything on two wheels. Oblivious, perhaps. I do wonder if people should be forced to take some kind of test or an assessment at least on a 50cc twist and go before they learn to drive a car so that they do at least have some awareness of people on two wheels, particularly motorbikes that are travelling at the same, roughly the same speed as them. So we're up out of the dale now. Still have to exercise caution because there's an awful lot of pedestrians and horse riders and dog walkers and cyclists on these kind of roads. Still this dashed section, I wonder if it's actually to just say, look, we can't be asked to repair the edge of the road, so just stick to the middle. Now we're on the road from Ellerton Crossroads, Ellerton Brantingham Crossroads, and we're heading up in the direction at the moment of Little Wheat. This is a road that I'm very familiar with. We used to go along here every Sunday going to church with mum and dad, always making mum's hair stand on end when we persuaded dad to drive a little bit possibly too fast on some of these roads especially the hill which actually doesn't look that impressive on a bike but uh, in the car it does and you can get a fair amount of g-force even in a little old Ford Escorts that we used to uh, pootle around in as children well, obviously not us but uh, dad driving so you're just coming up to Little Wheaton, South Cave Crossroads, the farm on the left. Um, I don't know if you saw, but in the field there's a chimney. There used to be an underground railway here. Tunnels and the railway passed underground and the chimneys were for the steam from the steam engines. So you come through these crossroads and ahead of you is the steep hill, which we used to uh, try and persuade Dad to drive <coughs> at 100 miles an hour down because he would never go faster than 100, but he liked to see that a car could do 100. And you got a fair, fair amount of G, as I've already mentioned, coming up the other side. Particularly in the opposite direction, but approaching the crossroads you have to be uber careful. You've got a fair old runoff after this way. So now heading down into the dale, uh, into the village of North Newbold. Lots of walkers again, so while it'd be nice to hair it down here, it's, uh, it's not overly sensible. I'm sure they can hear you coming, but they don't seem to want to get out of the way until they can actually physically see you. It's a tranquil little place. This it used to be a proper Yorkshire village. It's now more of a commuter village, quite close to the M62. Full of millionaires, footballers, ex-footballers, film stars, soap stars, and anybody else who can afford to spend seven figures on a, on a house. So I'm going to disturb their tranquility for a few seconds. Though no one's looked horrified at me quite yet. Tiger Inn, one of the two pubs in this tiny little village ahead of us. GNU on the left, a bunch of cyclists there. They're probably thinking horrible things about this noisy R11 exhaust racketing through their peaceful little countryside retreat. Drive ahead used to be the drive up to the vicarage, now private house. Worth probably 
quite a lot of money. And here is Newball Church, the most complete and oldest Norman Parish Church in England. Time for a breather. <coughs> so we're off again, excuse me, off again and heading towards Sankton Market Wheaton. Nice twisty roads, but uh, expect to see a speed camera along here because there have been that many fatals on these roads over the last 40 years of my life. Still no reason not to pass the door to us though. Safely. Find the cyclists. Then coming into the village of Bishop Burton, Bishop Burton Agricultural College. Seems to be some kind of incident going on there. Lots of police, two cars. Curious, curious. And this is a road, of course, average speed cameras as well, so caution. Now we head towards Cherry Burton, where apparently uh, several film stars have uh, sighted out properties, including. Uh, James Bond, Daniel Craig, of course, apparently uh, bought a house here some time ago. Whether he still lives here or not, I don't know. Doubt if it's one of those on the left, not being snobbish. Because they're nice houses. I looked at one some time ago. Go back out on the open road. Taking a wrong turning, you know. Yep, so I did take a wrong turning. So back the way we come, and this is Sancton from the opposite direction. Didn't really see Sancton on the on the way. So I'll show you a little bit of it. For the picturesque chocolate box village in the Dales. Sorry, the Yorkshire Wolds. Thirty, forty years ago, a lot of these houses, believe it or not, still had only outdoor toilets. No carpets on the walls. Um, you wouldn't expect carpets on the walls, would you? But carpets on the floor, and uh, they had wrought iron, cast iron fire mantles with uh, the clothes drying next to them, open fire to cook your toast on, and uh, the iron, the black iron, black. Past irons. It's back out onto the country lanes again, up past the dairy farm. We'll be heading in the direction of uh, South Cave this time. Approaching this crossroads here, your left takes you up to High Hunsley and right to North Cave, but it's offset. And you can see that one vehicle's pulled out, the black one going, its front wheels are rolling. It's offset the crossroads, the turn off to North Cave is shortly afterwards. People do tend to pull out at both junctions without looking particularly well. So it's always a good idea to exercise a good deal of caution. There's been quite a few fatals at that junction there. I had no intention of becoming a statistic especially on roads where I'm very familiar. On the left here there's a, a farm shop. I don't know whether it's still open with coronavirus and so on, but very good reputation, supposed to do superb cakes. So in my opinion, definitely worth a stop. Now, this road sweeps down and then sweeps up to the right. There used to be a bridge here because this was the crossing. I mentioned the railway, the underground railway earlier on. South Cave Railway Station here, and this was the line that did go underground. On the left you might just catch a glimpse of the station houses, renovated, rebuilt in some cases. 
we're heading back up now where there was a bridge about 20 years ago. This is another commuter village, very pricey. So, dropping down onto the A63, coming out of South Cove, and it's a boring bit now, I'm afraid. So, it's all, I've called it motorway for the sake of argument. It's, it's an A road, dual carriageway, 70 miles an hour. As any biker will appreciate, these kind of roads are the most tedious. Always good to say thank you. Don't always get it back such an example. Some may follow, he says optimistically. Oh, just let the fucking lorry get past. Stop being a dick. all the beeping and everything, expecting a young driver, I find the driver's a sort of middle-aged towards elderly gent. Well, not so much of a gent, really, because uh, blocking a lorry and then uh, tailgating it and beeping your horn isn't very gentlemanly. So anyway, time to go. Past the lorry, pull in at a safe distance, and look in my mirrors, and lo and behold, the Civic has now come past the lorry and would you believe it, he's brake checking him. Who on earth in their right mind in a one and a half ton car would brake check a 40 ton truck? Quite frankly, deserve the license taking off them and putting in a shredder. Well, that's it, folks, for another day. Hope to speak to you all soon. God bless. Take care. Stay safe.